Hey, Chris. Hey. Hey, you there? Hey, Chris. Hey, are you there? Hey, so we should probably get the data sheet for the BC-127 up on the breakout board page. Both the breakout and the purple tooth jamboree, because people are going to want to see that. It's a pretty good data sheet. It's pretty long. Was, you know, hey, Chris. How's the uh, intercom system working? It's pretty inside of Have you read it? It's pretty long. That's okay. Hey, Sounds great. Enjoy. Lunch. I was thinking like chicken Caesar salad or something like that. Some crisp romaine and some grilled chicken. You know, it's really tasty. A little bit Parmesan. Hey, Chris. Are you there? Hey. Hey, Chris. You there? Hello everyone, welcome to a very red Friday new product post here at Sparkfun Electronics. We've got a lot of new products this week, so let's see what we've got. First up, we've got a new audio trigger board. This is the Wave Trigger. The Wave Trigger is very similar to the MP3 Trigger in that it accepts triggers to play audio sounds. For those of you not familiar with either one, you can connect buttons or any other type of input, so you know, little actuators, things like that that would then trigger the corresponding WAV file that is stored on the SD card. This one is different from the MP3 in that it plays WAV files where the MP3 plays MP3 files. These are great for art installations, something like a haunted house, or even a museum where you press a button and you want a sound file to play. The MP3 trigger has already made its way into a lot of projects in the building. For instance, in the marketing department, we use it to hurl insults at each other using this box. But I thought we could upgrade using the new Wave Trigger board to deliver even more devastating insults. To explore its effects, let's see how each one of these impacts Nick. Nick, how was your day? It's pretty good. Oh, good for you! Oh, yeah. So he responded somewhat to the MP3 trigger. Now let's see how he does with an insult from the Wave Trigger. I'll just put these on. Well, the extra sound quality from the wave trigger really made a difference. You guys are a bunch of jerks. Next up, we have a lot of new products for the RedBot. We've got four new sensors and interfaces for the RedBot. And I'll start with the RedBot bumper. The RedBot bumper is this little board right here and is just a basic mechanical bumper. It comes with this little length of music wire, which is just um, you know really strong metal wire. And we have some standoffs, some screws. And when they get assembled, they look a little something like this. You can see we've got them mounted on the Magician chassis, which is part of the whole RedBot kit. And when the whisker is actually pressed down, it just touches on the nut, creates a contact, and you get this little curb feeler, similar to a little old lady's car. The next board that we have this week is the wheel encoder board. This is a very simple little board that mounts inside the chassis, and it uses two little infrared detectors to detect the movement or the positioning of the motors. We have these two discs here, and the board actually detects the slots in them, and so then it can detect how far this has moved. Let's say you're starting out right here and you want to move exactly two feet. Just by turning the motors on, it's going to be very difficult to tell how far it's traveled. But if you read the feedback from this, you can actually determine exactly how far each motor has traveled, and then you can calculate how far you need to go to travel your full two feet. Next up is this simple little buzzer. This is a buzzer that plugs directly into the main board here and gives you some kind of auditory feedback. So if you bump into something, if there's a problem, if the you know, robot gets stalled, you can just have a little buzzer go off. So it's a very simple and effective way to get some kind of auditory feedback that maybe there's something wrong. Lastly, we have a new revision of the accelerometer board that goes onto the RedBot. This board is different from the previous one in that it has straight through headers. This board communicates with I squared C, so when you plug it into the board, you utilize that I squared C and you couldn't attach anything else to it. This new one with the pass through headers, you can actually keep stacking other I squared C components on top of it. In addition to all the new hardware that we have this week, we also have two new tutorials for the RedBot specifically. The first one is an assembly guide that shows you how to hook and configure all of these things up to your RedBot kit. The other one is a tutorial that runs through basic little tutorials on how to use the wheel encoder, use a mechanical bumper, and everything else that's included with the RedBot family. 
Chris and Rob needed to improve their workflow, so I decided to put together an intercom system. Luckily, we just came out with this dev board for the BC-127. It's called the Purple Tooth Jamboree, and it has everything that you need to create an audio bridge between two of these boards, or just to use it to control a media device like your cell phone or something else Bluetooth enabled. All I had to do was add one of our Electret mic breakouts to one end, and then I plugged Chris's uh, computer speakers into the uh, headphone jack on the other board and set them up with a Pro Mini on either side and now they have an intercom system that helps them get their work done. Just go and add that to the product page of the breakout and also the Purple Tooth Jamboree. Um, you know, just get on that whenever you get a chance. While Rob's voice may have sounded loud and grating over the intercom system, these actually have pretty decent sound quality. Uh, we had our microphone overdriven and we had the speakers way overdriven. If you have a good line in input to one of them and you have the other ones going out to a decent pair of speakers, you actually get good quality stereo sound out of them.